Hey, what's going on all you PC addicts? Jay's Two Cents here, and I get a lot of product that comes through this room. And a while ago, I actually was given a Samsung 840 Evo to put into Skunk Works. This wasn't actually sent to me for an official review, but I have been mentioning that the 256 gigabyte SSD on Skunk Works is filling up pretty fast. And the 128 gigabyte SSD that's currently installed in my test rig has less than eight gigabytes free on it. It's pretty damn atrocious when it comes to hard drive uh, situation in this room. Now I've been putting off actually doing the transfer of data onto the new Samsung drive because I'm so busy making content for you guys and then it dawned on me. Why don't I just do a review showing you guys how to migrate all of your data? Why didn't I think of this sooner? EVGA's ACX 2.0 cooler with its three-phase six-slot motor, 11 swept fan blades, and double ball bearing design offers reduced power, noise, and thermals for the optimum gaming experience. Click the link in the description to learn more. Now this is actually a topic that has been requested quite a bit, and I never thought about doing it because sometimes I forget things that seem so basic to me, especially since I work in IT for my day job, uh, sometimes I, I forget just how not common sense it really is. What I mean by that is a lot of people who've never done it wouldn't necessarily know where to start. Now, if you do a simple Google search, you'll find that there's a ton of utilities out there that actually do data migration and copying and cloning of drives, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the way that I do it. Now, this is the drive that came out of Skunk Works. The main SSD was an ADATA SX900 256 gigabyte drive, and I have the exact same drive in a 128 gigabyte format in the test rig behind me. Now it doesn't actually matter what kind of drives you have. It doesn't have to go from an SSD to an SSD. It can go from a hard drive to a solid state drive, back and forth, it doesn't matter. All it's gonna do is take the data and clone it over to the new drive. Now I use a program called Acronis True HD. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is it actually comes bundled with the A data drives. And prior to doing my A data reviews, I just used some free utilities, which sometimes were great and sometimes they weren't. But today's topic, we're actually covering it with the Acronis True HD that comes bundled with the SSD. Now they're not a sponsor of the channel or anything, it just is what I have available to me. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to install these drives into the test rig. We are gonna set the A data as our source drive, and we're gonna set the Samsung 840 Evo as the destination. So it's gonna format the SSD, and then it's gonna copy the data here and put it onto there. So we have two exact copies, regardless of what the capacity is. It doesn't really matter what the capacity is, as long as the data that you're copying fits on the drive that you're trying to put it on. I couldn't take 500 gigabytes of data and put it onto the 256. That wouldn't exactly work. In fact, it wouldn't even let you do it. It would tell you there's a capacity issue. So we're gonna install these into the computer. We're gonna boot up a Cronus and we're gonna point the camera at the screen. It's a little bit archaic, but I can't use my capture device because it's gonna actually do a custom partition on one of the drives and it's gonna boot into its own little OS where it's actually gonna do the cloning. So let's go ahead and get these installed and start up the utility. Transition. Okay guys, so we're currently booted here into my test system. And if we take a look at my computer, you can see the situation is actually worse than I thought. I only have 6.13 gigabytes left on my 128 gigabyte drive. That's pretty bad. Now this is just a system recovery partition. This is my original SSD that came out of Skunk Works, 162 gigabytes free. And this is the 500 gigabyte SSD here. You can see there's a little bit of data on there. But here they are, everything was automatically detected and you're good to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a Cronus True HD. Over here on the right, there's a box here where it says clone disk. There's a lot of different features built into this, but we are going to do clone disk and it's gonna initialize here and it's gonna allow us to do automatic or manual, which gives us full control. We're gonna do automatic here. And I'm gonna say that I want to take my source disk, which it's asking for right here, source disk, which is my, SX, SX900 even labels them out. It says Samsung SSD 840 Evo, 500 gigabyte, ADATA SX900, 119 gigabytes free after the system partition, and then my ADATA SX900, 238 gigabytes of my 256. So this, this is my source. I'm telling it to copy the 238 gigabyte drive. And we're gonna give it a destination disk. And as you can see, it grayed out our source because we can't copy it from itself to itself. That would be kind of redundant. 
We're going to copy it here over to the 840 Evo. Hit next, nec, hit next. The de hit next, the destination hard disk drive you've chosen contains some partitions that could contain useful data. Click OK to confirm deletion of all partitions on the destination hard disk drive. So what it's saying is it's going to wipe the drive. Now we want to go ahead and copy partitions without changes or copy partitions and use disk as a non-system GPT cell. We're going to go ahead and copy all the partitions with no changes. I want a direct copy. We're going to hit next. Target disk and source disk are correctly identified. Here they are. And we're going to go ahead and send this thing off to the races. So proceed. So now what it's going to do is it's going to analyze the source and the destination. This could take up to 20, 25 minutes to actually perform, but as you can see, it was just a few simple clicks. So we'll go ahead and let this thing run and do its thing, and then we'll come back to it and see how well it did. And once again, I apologize for the audio and or the video quality here. I will work on better ways to do screen captures, I promise. But once I got away from HDMI cables, it actually got a lot harder to do screen caps. My bad. All right, so the cloning is done. We booted back into the operating system on the test bench. And if we open up our file explorer here, you'll see here's our crappy drive that is nearly full. We've got our, four, our 500 gigabyte drive right here and our 256 gigabyte drive right here. Now this was the source. Here are the files. You can see all the folders and stuff, the Windows folders, the Windows 10 folder, Windows old, because I upgraded from seven. It's my fraps folder that's got some of my benchmarks and stuff in there that I've been working on. And if we go ahead and take a look at the destination drive, the 500 gigabyte SSD, it's the exact same thing. Oh, look at that. All the exact same stuff in here. So they are now direct clones of each other. So theoretically, all I have to do now is plop the 500 gigabyte SSD into Skunkworks and we're up and running. So there you go. A short, sweet, non-fluffy video here from Jace Two Cents just showing you quick and easy how I handle all of the different drives coming in and out of this place and moving them around between computers without having to spend tons of time reinstalling things. So if you've got computers that you want to be exact copies of each other, this is a really easy way to do it. This is also really easy. We use this in IT. We use them. We basically create ISOs from the existing hard drives. And when we set up new computers at work, we just copy the ISOs, which is our main, like uh, kind of a master copy of all of our operating systems and software and stuff. We just install the ISO onto the new drives, which we created also from a utility, simple, uh, very similar to this. So guys, I've been Jace Two Cents. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. I didn't do anything crazy with the editing. I just wanted to give you nice raw information here. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Head on over to Twitter if you have any questions. If you want to submit topics very similar to the hundreds of you that have requested this video, you finally got it. Head on over there or Facebook to tell me what topics you guys would like to see me cover. And I think one of the resounding ones people keep asking for is, Jay, how do you do cable management? Again, it's one of those things that seems really simple and straightforward and common sense to me, but maybe there's some tips and tricks I can show you guys to help out when it comes to cable management. So I'm gonna get out of here now. I'm gonna install it in Skunkworks. We're gonna be up and running. And as always, guys, hope to see you in the next one.